In this video, we're going to discuss the effect of concentration on free energy changes. So free energy changes for chemical reactions and physical processes are often calculated under what we call thermodynamic standard conditions. If we calculate delta G under these conditions, we call it delta G standard, and the standard uh, conditions are represented by the degree sign. So that indicates that the delta G was conduct or measured under standard conditions. These standard conditions include one molar concentration for solutions, the gas pressure must be at one atmosphere for gases, and the temperature must be 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. And if the pH is applicable, the pH is generally 7. Now to calculate the standard free energy change, we know two equations that allow us to do that. We can calculate the standard free energy change using the standard enthalpy and the standard entropy using the Gibbs free energy equation, or we can calculate the standard free energy change using the free energies of formation of the products minus the free energy of formations of the reactants. And we've discussed both of these reactions previously, or both of these equations previously. So how can we calculate the free energy change for chemical reactions and physical processes that occur under non-standard conditions? Well, it's important because most chemical reactions that occur outside of a laboratory occur under non-standard conditions. The temperature is not always 25 degrees. The, the um, concentrations are certainly not one molar. In fact, most of the uh, biochemical reactions that occur in our body are under non-standard conditions. So it's very important that we have a way of calculating free energy changes under these non-standard conditions. So for a process occurring under non-standard conditions, we're going to calculate delta G, not delta G naught or delta G standard. And the equation that we use for this is as follows. The free energy change under non-standard conditions is equal to the free energy change under standard conditions plus R, which is our gas constant, uh, T, which is our temperature, in Kelvin times the natural log of Q, our reaction quotient. So this formula takes into account the temperature and concentrations under non-standard conditions. You can see the gas constant that we use here, 8.314. We use uh, the gas constant in terms of joules per Kelvin per mole. As we mentioned, the temperature is in Kelvin, and Q is our reaction quotient. The reaction quotient, of course, is basically the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of our reactants raised to any stoichiometric uh, power, as you can see here. And we've studied this previously when we talked about equilibrium. So let's take a look at a problem and see if we can calculate delta G for this reaction under non-standard conditions. And we know these are non-standard conditions because we're given partial pressures that are not one atmosphere. So pause the video and see if you can solve this. But first, uh, let me give you a hint. You may need some values from the appendix of your textbook in order to help calculate delta G standard. Okay, so pause the video and give it a try. Okay. So for this one, we want to use our equation that will allow us to solve for delta G non-standard. And so let's start by calculating Q. Q is going to be the partial pressures of our uh, products over reactants. Of course, we don't include carbon because that's a pure solid. So we plug in our partial pressures. We get uh, 0.1 for the ethylene, 100 squared. We square it because we have the two coefficient there. We calculate Q to be 1 times 10 to the minus 5. We can now plug that into our equation. Okay, We have R, our gas constant. That's a constant. Of course, our temperature, 25 Celsius. We can calculate that, that in Kelvin, 298.15. So we have everything we need except for delta G standard. Well, as we mentioned before, there are a couple of ways that we can calculate delta G standard. Here, we would want to use the free energies of formation to calculate delta G standard. So our delta G standard can be calculated using the free energy of formation of our products minus those of our reactants. So if we get these values from our appendix in our textbook, I've got a little sample of that here, we see that ethylene, the free energy formation, 68.1 kilojoules per mole. So we can plug that in here. And if we notice the carbon and hydrogen, those are in the standard state. So remember from the 
discussion on free energy formation, any element in its standard state has a free energy formation of zero. So the delta G uh, standard for this reaction will be equal to 68.1 kilojoules per mole. Okay, now we can plug that into our equation along with the R, T, and the natural log of Q, and we can solve. Now be careful to watch your units. We have kilojoules over here. We have joules over here, so we want to be sure we get everything in the right units, the same units. And if we solve this, ultimately we should get a delta G value for this reaction, <clears throat> which is 39.6 kilojoules per mole. So you can see it's still non-spontaneous, but it's a little less non-spontaneous than delta G under standard conditions. So be sure that you can recognize when to use this equation to calculate delta G non-standard and be sure you can use to and be sure you can calculate any values correctly.